Um, if, if the landing on the virtual tower with the booster works, then we will actually try with Flight 5 to come back and land on the tower. Yes, you heard it right. Let's discuss that today. ULA launched Delta 4 Heavy Rocket for the final time. Hey, I'm Lucas. Welcome to the SpaceX community. Let's get started. SpaceX is projecting an ambitious plan with its Starship program, aiming to not only increase the frequency of flights, but also enhance the performance of the launch vehicle. Elon Musk, the visionary CEO of SpaceX, recently shared insights during a presentation at the company's Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas, which was broadcasted on April 6th. The fourth launch of Starship Super Heavy is on the horizon, slated for approximately a month from now. This aligns with earlier projections made by SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell at the Satellite 2024 conference. If all goes according to plan, this upcoming launch will occur in less than two months following the vehicle's third flight. The primary goal of the fourth flight is for the Starship upper stage to withstand the intense heat of re-entry and execute a controlled splashdown into the ocean. Musk highlighted the importance of this objective, especially considering the disintegration of Starship during re-entry on the previous flight. In a bold move, SpaceX is aiming to recover the Super Heavy booster intact on the subsequent flight by landing it on what Musk describes as a virtual tower in the Gulf of Mexico. Success in this endeavor would mark a significant milestone potentially paving the way for bringing the booster back to Starbase for a landing as early as the fifth flight. Musk expressed cautious optimism about the possibility of achieving this feat within the year, estimating the odds at an impressive 80 to 90 percent. This optimism is grounded in the innovative approach of utilizing Mechazilla, a pair of giant arms designed to cradle the booster during landing, adding a touch of science fiction to the real-world endeavor. However, the recovery process for the Starship upper stage is expected to take longer. Musk outlined a prudent approach, emphasizing the importance of ensuring safety and avoiding debris scattering over populated areas. SpaceX aims to achieve two consecutive successful controlled splashdowns of Starship in the ocean before attempting a landing at Starbase, underscoring their commitment to responsible spaceflight practices. To support the anticipated increase in flight rates, SpaceX is ramping up production of Starship vehicles. Musk revealed plans to build approximately six more vehicles this year, with production rates expected to surge even further in the coming years. This necessitates the construction of a giant factory at Starbase to accommodate the expanded manufacturing capacity and facilitate rapid iteration and improvement. In addition to production enhancements, SpaceX is expanding its launch infrastructure. A second launch tower is currently under construction at Starbase, while the first launch tower at Cape Canaveral is slated to become operational by the middle of next year. Musk envisions utilizing these facilities for various purposes, including development launches, testing and manufacturing, with operational launches primarily conducted from Cape Canaveral. With increased production capacity and infrastructure, SpaceX aims to significantly boost payload capacity. Musk detailed improvements to the Raptor engine, which will increase thrust to over 330 metric tons force, supporting the development of a more powerful Starship 2. This next-generation vehicle is expected to be capable of placing over 100 metric tons into orbit in a fully reusable configuration opening up new possibilities for space exploration and commercial activities. Looking further ahead, Musk hinted at a future. Starship three inches with even greater capacity, capable of launching over 200 metric tons into orbit in a fully reusable mode. He emphasized the potential cost efficiencies of these advancements, projecting launch costs as low as two to three million dollars per launch, which would represent a significant reduction compared to traditional rocket launches. In conclusion, SpaceX's ambitious plans for the Starship program are aimed to revolutionize space travel, accompanying in a new era of exploration and innovation.
With a focus on increased frequency, enhanced performance, and cost efficiencies, SpaceX is charting a bold course towards a future where space is more accessible and sustainable than ever before. That's all about today's Starship updates. Stay tuned for more updates. I'd like to quickly remind you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We regularly upload informative SpaceX and space news videos that you won't want to miss. Be sure to turn on the notification bell so you're notified whenever we release new content. After over 60 years of liftoffs, the final Delta rocket took to the skies on Tuesday, marking a significant shift in how the US launches satellites, probes and spacecraft into Earth orbit. United Launch Alliance, ULA, fired up its last Delta IV heavy rocket to carry Enrol 70, a secret payload for the US National Reconnaissance Office, NRO. The mighty booster blasted off from Space Launch Complex 37, SLC 37, at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida at 12.53 p.m. EDT, closing a chapter in space exploration history. It's a mix of emotions for us, said Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance. The Delta IV is an incredible piece of technology, towering at 23 stories tall, filled with half a million gallons of propellant, boasting two and a quarter million pounds of thrust. It's the most metal rocket of all, quite literally setting itself ablaze before heading to space. This spectacular display unique to the Delta IV Heavy's heaviest configuration, occurs as hydrogen accumulates in the flame trench and ignites alongside the rocket. The hydrogen, used to cool the RS-68A engines to cryogenic temperatures, ignites when the engines fire up, causing flames to engulf the core stage and its side-mounted boosters. We witness the boosters turning into nicely toasted marshmallows and the dramatic sight of the rocket self-immolating before its journey, Bruno explained. Four minutes into the flight, the two boosters were discarded, followed by the separation of the core stage one minute and 45 seconds later. The Delta Cryogenic Second Stage, powered by a single RL-10C21 engine, then took over, propelling the NROL-70 payload into orbit. Due to national security protocols, coverage of the launch ended after the fairing jettisoned approximately 6 minutes and 40 seconds into the flight. With the retirement of the Delta IV and eventually the Atlas V, ULA is ushering in its new era with the Vulcan rocket, which debuted successfully in January. The Vulcan is designed to replace both legacy rockets across their various configurations. This mission highlights the transition as national security space missions are our priority, requiring a high-energy launch vehicle. Vulcan was crafted with this in mind, Bruno emphasized. Tuesday's launch marked several milestones. The 16th Delta, 4 heavy launch, the 45th Delta 4 liftoff, the 35th Delta IV launch from Florida, and the 389th Delta launch overall since 1960, with 294 from Cape Canaveral. Half of the Delta IV heavy launches were dedicated to NRO payloads, while the rocket and its variants also supported missions for NASA, NOAA, the US Air Force, and commercial ventures. The inaugural Delta launch on May 13, 1960, aim to deploy the world's first passive communication satellite experiment, but was unsuccessful due to thruster failure. Initially, the Delta served as the second stage atop a Thor ballistic missile, hence its name, Thor Delta. The legacy of the Delta rocket series is now sealed, making way for the next generation of launch vehicles as humanity continues to explore the cosmos. Thanks for watching today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for another great video tomorrow.